Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar on new facilities in the recently released LUSAS version 19. On behalf of LUSAS, I'd like to welcome existing users and those considering LUSAS in their future alike. My name is Philip Ike, Marketing Director, and I'd like to introduce you to my colleagues delivering this event today. Terry Cakebread, Regional Manager, will give an overview of facilities, and Andy Taylor, Support Engineer, will demonstrate the use of LUSAS in those areas. This is an interactive event, so please do participate with questions. We will answer all of them. Some we will answer during the session live, others you will get a text back directly during the session, and depending on volume, others may need to be uh, replied to by mail latterly. And with that, I'll hand over to Terry. Thank you, Phil. So firstly, let's look at steel composite bridge decks, which uh, presents some particular challenges in terms of analysis and design. Uh, traditionally, these have been modeled as grillage models, uh, but studies have identified some weaknesses in the grillage analysis approach, particularly for bridges that which are curved on plan or heavily skewed. And the US Transportation Research Board have identified inaccuracies of up to 30% for grillages, even just in the major axis bending stresses, depending on curvature, skew, continuity, and cross-frame arrangements. So Lucis version 19 includes a range of new or improved functions which have composite bridge decks in mind. For rapid model building, here I'm referring to both our new wizard for creating 3D beam and shell models and our new tools for grillage models. Our influence surface facilities, which work with the vehicle load optimizer. Branched analysis to give more flexibility when modeling staged construction sequences. Deck temperature profiles and design checking to Ashto for the United States, adding to what has been around for a while, our existing Eurocode design facilities. So here's a plan view of a typical curved girder bridge. Three spans curved on plan with interior supports heavily skewed. Uh, in fact, there's four girders of various bracing arrangements used across the spans. And fundamentally, the engineer can choose to idealize that structure using a grillage model or using a 3D shell and beam element model uh, like this. However, if they want to do this kind of model, that's typically quite a cr tricky job. So Lucis version 19 introduces a parametric approach where you define the bridge, the plan curvature, number of spans and support definitions, the supports, the skew, the restraints, the bracing arrangements, of course, the sections and the materials, where each section is applied, the stiffeners and intermediate bracing. And then essentially you click create model and you get all the points and lines and surfaces, the mesh attributes, thicknesses, cross sections, materials, supports, all that is done for you. And more importantly, the model can be changed and edited as well, either within the wizard or even at a later stage. And if you deactivate the deck, you can see the results for the dead load on the bare girders. And the improved slicing tools in Lucis give you non-composite moments, shears, etc. And of course, similar results are available for the fully composite bridge as well. Now, in a real construction po project, the pouring sequence it might be used to mitigate against cracking in the slab. And this could be modeled in Lucis using activation and deactivation. And together with time inputs and creep and shrinkage material, you can build up 
quite a detailed picture of any construction sequence. What's also new is that you can now create influence surfaces on slice effects. So this is the influence surface to create traffic loading based on the bending moment in the composite girder at mid-span of girder two. So it's not the tension in the top flange or compression in the bottom flange, it's the actual overall bending for that girder, which is made up of shell elements and beam elements. Essentially, this means that your more elaborate shell and beam model can give you output just like a grillage and even traffic load patterns just like a grillage. So now let me pass you over to Andy, who's going to show us a quick run through the composite bridge deck wizard. Thank you very much, Terry. So the composite bridge wizard is aimed at steel concrete composite structures where the slab and the girder webs are going to be modelled as shell elements, while the girder flanges, stiffeners and any bracing will be modelled as beam elements. There are quite a few inputs required for the wizard through the bridge, steel composite bridge wizard menu, but for the purposes of this demo, I predefined them. So first thing you need to define is your cross section definition. So what your dimensions of your steel girder are and what materials being used and the same for your concrete slab. You then need to define a girder, which is how the cross sections uh, line up longitudinally. You then need to define a span, which is which girders are adjacent to each other in each span. You then need to define your supports, your stiffeners, and then you can bring it all together into your overall bridge layout. But you can also specify whether it's a straight bridge or whether it's curved to the left or to the right. Lusas can then generate the geometry for you. And if I switch to the completed view of the structure, we can see here on plan the geometry that's been created. And if we rotate the structure, we can see all of the bracing between our members. If I turn on fleshing in the model, we can see the fully rendered all three dimensions of every element. And we can see in green the concrete top slab and the webs of the girders. And in pink for beam elements, we can see the top and bottom flanges, cross bracing and the stiffeners. If I then solve to get results, We can then look at, for example, contours of bending moment in the shells. And this would be suitable for looking at the transverse bending moment in the deck slab in order to design your transverse reinforcement. If we look at the groups tab, and we've got some automatically generated groups here, and if we select the members of GERD2, for longitudinal design, we want to consider all of these elements acting together compositely. So we want to get the stresses from the deck slab added to the stresses from the beam in order to get the total bending moment on the composite section. And we can do that by creating a slice. So if we select the top flange, we can use this to define the center line of our girder to beam. Go to utilities, slice resultants, going to go with constant spacing of one meter and ask Lusas every meter along this center line we've defined to calculate the total bend moment of all of the elements added together. And we're going to tell it that only members within the girder two group can be used for this. And we can then turn on our bend moment diagram for this slice. And there's the bending moment diagram for girder to composite member all of the element uh, stresses from all of the elements added together to work out the total bending moment. I can see there's a question that's just come in uh, asking are we modeling the top and bottom flanges as beam elements? Uh, yes we are. So top and bottom flanges are beam elements. The shell of the the web of the girder is modeled using shell elements. Uh, in order to get full 3D effects from our model. Okay, that's it for this demonstration. Back to you, Terry. 
Thanks, Andy. Thanks very much. OK. Um, so just um, I now want, just want to go back and show actually what the vehicle load optimizer does with those influence surfaces. And I'm going to do that in reference to Ashto on the curve bridge that I showed you earlier. I'm referencing Ashto here as I deal with our clients in the USA, but similar rules and procedures apply to other codes as well. So the curb lines are defined by the user. That's these two uh, black boxes you can see here and here. Um, and then the vehicle load optimizer, if working to standard Ashto, um, divides the space into 12 foot lanes. If the width isn't divisible by 12, as in this case, there'll be three notional lanes and in fact, about one foot six here remaining, which is shown in red. And then this remaining area will be positioned automatically such that the loaded lanes are in the most onerous location for each influence surface. The vehicles are run up and down the lanes, which are in and out of the plane of the screen that you can see here. And the notional vehicles, which are six foot wide, and the lane loads, which are 12 foot wide, a position transversely within each lane to give the most onerous effects, bearing in mind any rules about proximity to the edge of the lane, curb or railing. The variable axle spacing in design trucks will take the most onerous value between 14 and 30 foot, which is for Ashto, for each truck and any relieving axles are omitted. So sometimes for moments over internal supports, often two vehicles are used with the 90% factor. With the vehicle optimizer giving the most onerous effect for girder two, which we can see here in black on this screen, and these are the curb lines, and the HL93 loading from Ashto LRFD, we see here a loading pattern that makes sense for span one, with the lane load in purple and the lorry load in red. And for span two, and for span three, which is nearly a mirror image of span one, but slightly different lane load distribution and stagger of lorry load. You'll notice that actually the influence surfaces and these load patterns can easily be viewed. So the engineer can always check the validity of the loading. So the vehicle optimizer works to uh, the Euro code EN9091-2 and various national annexes, including Ireland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Italy, Poland, etc. Uh, UK codes, including superseded ones, and also the recently issued CS454, including both load models. World coverage goes on to include Canada and the US, with even the state manuals for individual states in the US taken into account. Um, Saudi Arabia, China, New Zealand, and Australia, again, including the assessment code, and new in version 19, the Indian IRC6 code. Alongside our vehicle load optimizer, you'll also find our railway load optimizer. This works to UIC 7763, 776, I beg your pardon, and the Euro code with a range of national annexes and also includes the um, ARIMA code uh, and the UK network rail assessment codes, and in all cases deals with curvature of track. There's even an eight minute video on this link that you can see here on the slide, but also that's on our website. The alternative to the 3D model with a slicing, which we showed earlier, is actually to use a grillage model. And we know that for certain situations, many bridge engineers do favor that simplified approach. So we've added to the grillage tool, which Andy will show you shortly. It includes a grillage load, grillage cross section definition, which allows you to define any uh, girder section, be it a, a rolled steel or plate girder, or indeed a precast, or maybe a rectangular section like a diaphragm, for example, or in fact, any custom shape you care to define. The sections might be uh, prismatic or varying, and if it's varying, it can be assigned stretch to fit over a series of lines in a grillage. So that's really convenient. For the slab of the composite section, well, the width may vary along the assigned length as when girders are splayed, 
and you might enter effective widths to account for shear lag, which can also vary across the span. And for slabs that are cracked, which are cracked in tension or reinforcement details may also be added. And for the composite section overall, there are options for the treatment of the slab as being cracked or uncracked with a plain concrete stiffness or the gross stiffness. The torsional constant and the warping constant, including adjustments suggested in the NCHRP report 725, which we saw earlier. And then to go with that, we have the slab section with suitable options for cracking, handling both solid and uh, voided sections and or voided sections, as you can see here now. Of course, the material attributes are here for uh, short term uh, and also long term and wet concrete, including or excluding the stiffness and mass as appropriate. So these parts then come together with our analysis tree. So you assign the section shapes once only in the base analysis, along with the short term material properties, which might be assigned, say, because the long term material properties might be assigned in analysis two, and the wet concrete in analysis three. And the calculations to Hambly or the NCHRP report are handled from there. And then furthermore, we've added the ability to insert branches from any stage in any construction sequence. That could be for one or more linear static load cases in uh, one or more stages, perhaps to consider some plant or construction equipment moving around the site, or it could be an, an elastic buckling analysis for a particular stage of construction, or indeed a full non-linear buckling analysis for maybe a half completed structure, or perhaps an alternative construction sequence, or even maybe a natural frequency analysis or perhaps a transient dynamic analysis, such as a seismic event. Indeed, any analysis type can be a branch. You can have as many branches as you like. And if you change the branch, Lucis doesn't need to rerun the main trunk analysis. So it's really time efficient as a facility too. Furthermore, we've added codified bridge deck temperature profiles to Eurocode, Ashto, and Australia with a choice of approaches, a choice of national annexes, and deck type. And then with a few more inputs, we're able to create two attributes, one for the deck warmer than the girder and one the other way around. And these can be used with a grillage type model to apply the appropriate overall moments. If your code isn't covered, or if you have some special temperature profile to consider, don't worry, because you can define your own profile, either just by entering depths and temperature profile values, or as in this example, using a formula to handle sections of different depths or tapering sections with just one definition. So now Andy will show us a brief run through of the Grillage Wizard. Thank you, Terry. So in this grillage model, we can use the new grillage section definition through attributes geometric bridge deck grillage, where for your longitudinal sections, you can define your girder, you can define your slab, which may taper by using the varying linearly dimensions. You can have effective widths. You can even have tapering effective widths if you need them. We can also define how the girder and slab interact, such as whether the slab is cracked or not, and how the torsional connection uh, is considered between the slab and the girder, using the rules uh, from Hambly in order to determine the torsional constant. For your transverse sections, we can also define your slab, which can be uh, cracked or uncracked once more. And also, if you're doing a voided slab deck rather than beam and slab, we also have voided options for defining the slab. 
We've also got new grillage material properties. And these ones I just defined earlier, such as this one for dead load, where we've included the mass of the slab, but not the stiffness of it. So this will allow us to consider the weight of the wet concrete from the slab acting as a load on the girder, which does have stiffness and therefore therefore carry the load. I've also in this model got a long term property where we've included the stiffness of both the slab and the girder. These different material properties can then be assigned in different analyses. And then within each analysis, you can assign the loads that are appropriate to that material property. If we switch to looking at the stresses that have been calculated in this model, we can see here for the dead load analysis, the stresses that are being applied to the girder alone. And then if we switch to looking at results from this long-term analysis with surfacing loading, we can see the stresses being applied to the combined section. That was quite a quick and simple demo. Uh, now back to Terry. Uh, hi, can I just um, interject there? Um, just before we move on to Terry again, um, we've got a few questions here. So I'll, there's a couple that, that I'll cover. Um, we've got some sort of very general questions on LUSAS, which are outside the scope of this presentation. Um, so for those, we will come back to you separately um, later on. Um, we've also had a few people reporting some connection issues uh, locally. Um, in that situation, if you're struggling with audio or video, um, there is a recording option um, which can be provided uh, after the event. Um, another one, um, Andy, if I could pass this to you for superposition of combinations in the grillage model um, when using different materials. Is this is this possible? Can you feel that? OK, uh, yeah. So one of the advantages uh, of using the different analyses with the different materials within one model file uh, is that we can go to example, analyses basic combination and we can add the results from the uh, different analyses together with any factors that might be uh, appropriate for doing a ultimate limit state um, analysis, for example. Um, so we can then add those together using the principle of superposition, uh, even though we've got different material properties in the different analyses. OK, all right, great, thanks. Um, we've also had a couple of questions on geotechnics. Um, I would just say, uh, hold on, um, we'll come to the ground engineering part at, uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, but I think that's it for now. Otherwise, um, Terry, I'll, uh, I'll hand back to you. Thanks very much, Phil. Thanks, Andy. So uh, now Lucis covers from analysis to design code checks. Tools are available for reinforced concrete beams and columns. Uh, slabs and walls, steel frame members, and as we've seen, steel concrete composite bridge decks. Well, we're going to come on to the design, sorry, on that. Uh, and also track structure interaction and train structure dynamic interaction checks. So the RC designer offers ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state checks, including crack widths for biaxial bending together with overall tension or compression for reinforced concrete beams or columns or piles in fact any shape of cross section and any reinforcement arrangement and you can view utilization contours but you can also examine the calculations for any location and even view moments and axial force interaction plots and diagrams in 2D and in 3D. The reporting is transparent and comprehensive and this RC frame designer produces detailed reports and checks to many codes including Euro codes and the USA Ashto codes. It even covers Euro codes for bridges and buildings with uh, national annexes for 18 countries explicitly included, plus Singapore, and from version 19, 
it's extended to cover Ashto and Australia, Canada and India. To upgrade to use the new RC design module, simply you can complete the um, upgrade form on our website. And as a special offer, this is 50% off for orders placed before the end of December. Alongside the RC frame, beam and column designer, there's the slab and wall designer, which is included in Lucis. And this offers checks for plate bending, including twisting for ultimate limit state, including either, using either the wood armor approach or to incorporate in-plane tension or compression using the Clark-Nielsen method. An output can include contours of utilization, or in this case, for the required area of steel, for example, and it carries out serviceability limit state checks, including crack widths based on principal moments and stresses. So it covers the same Eurocode parts and national annexes as the RC frame designer, and also some now withdrawn British and Singaporean standards, plus various bridge and building codes listed here for the US, Canada, Australia, India, and the Chinese bridge code. Cousin to the RC frame designer is the optional steelwork designer, which carries out checks on beams or columns or truss members and offers both contours of utilization with a critical check like this one, or indeed each check in turn, if you like, and detailed, transparent, clause referenced calculations. Again, these calculations can be printed just by clicking on the print button, as we can see on the screen here, or can be added to the report part of Lucis, in which case, if the model is changed in any way, they will automatically be updated in the report. The Eurocode bridge and building codes are covered, along with US Ashto plus in version 19, the AISC 360 and Canadian codes and Australia and Chinese code in addition. In a, there's also the Eurocode steel and composite deck designer, which is a software option that carries out comprehensive calculations for multiple sections on steel or steel composite bridge decks which allows otherwise time consuming and error prone manual design calculations to be carried out efficiently. So this covers ULS and ultimate limit, ULS and SLS uh, stress, shear, checks, web, web breathing, fatigue checks, for main members and connectors, which are carried out rapidly. Multiple sections with various properties, haunches, stiffness can be considered as can bolted connections, and results output in tab dialogues visually show values that pass or fail. Graphs and a report containing all our input data and output with references to the Eurocode clauses can be easily created. This will work for a wide range of composite decks and section types shown here. After carrying out the various proportion checks like effective slab widths to Eurocode and differential shrinkage and temperature checks, the steel composite bridge deck designer then carries out comprehensive design checks, as you can see listed here. In version 19 on steel and composite bridge decks, we have added with optional design checks the Ashto code alongside our existing Eurocode product. Lucis also has a range of tools for post-tension structures, including the calculation of tendon losses and creep and shrinkage in beam elements and in shell elements, as you can see here, and solid elements. So these haven't changed particularly in version 19, so they're not really part of this presentation, and you can find out more on our website. But they do deal with creep and shrinkage and as you can see, even you can see the tendon profiles where they are with these blue lines and shells are obviously much better for, better for uh, transverse post tensioning, which you don't get with beam elements. And a lot of other software only does this in beam elements. Our rail track facilities enable a fast assessment of track structure interaction according to the Eurocode 
and UIC 7743 with wizards to automatically create models that have all the necessary nonlinear functionality and wizards to obtain all the forces, displacements and accelerations rapidly and conveniently. Improvements in version 19 here now allow the location of bearings inboard of the deck ends, leading to more accurate represent representation of the deck and rail system and also allow the definition of multiple train loading groups, making the consideration of many train configurations much more efficient. For train structure interaction, there's what we call IMD+, Plus, which has been used in the UK and North America, and indeed around the world for low speed and high speed rail dynamics. For example, here's a bowstring railway arch designed for the new generation of 140 mile an hour trains and it carries two tracks of the East Coast Main Line. So Lucis was used to carry out dynamic interaction analysis for rail track, and the IMD techniques used greatly reduced the time required to assess the dynamic response of the structure for numerous combinations of differing moving train loads and speeds. This tool will move many different train configurations represented as true sprung masses across structures at variable speeds to help identify the critical speed for dynamic interaction between the train and the structure. And as we can see here, we're looking at vertical accelerations uh, and you can see that around 57 miles per hour is the critical speed. From the model, you can obtain, for example, forces in the track components, stress, girder stresses, displacements, velocities, and accelerations and it's valid for a linear response but also useful in finding out about critical speeds and train configurations in non-linear structures. So many of our clients also uh, Harry, already sorry, use this. Harry, just, just before sorry. we move yeah. on um, because we're, we're going to move into the ground engineering part now um, I just want yeah. to collect up some of the um, the bridge queries that have come through, if that's okay, if we can just shop sure. the three or no four problem. of these here. Um, mm. So um, we've got a question here on um, optimizer dealing with um, CS454. Um, Andy, do you want to just answer that? Uh, yeah, okay. So the in the vehicle load optimization, we have added CS454 already. Uh, we've put in both ALL Model 1 and ALL Model 2 um, and within Model 1 we deal with both single vehicles on their own and we also deal with convoys of vehicles as well. Um, so yeah, our CS454 implementation is pretty comprehensive, I think. Okay, and another one we've got is some um, temperature profiles. Obviously we've shown them or described them here, I suppose, for composite decks. Um, so we've got a couple of questions here relating to the sort of section that we could calculate temperature profiles on. Can you answer that, please? Uh, okay, so the... Um, i trying to find the right words. Um, yes, yeah, so the temperature profile loading um, is designed for uh, grillage type analysis, really. So anywhere where you've got um, beam elements uh, representing, uh, you know, uh, representing a composite uh, member, uh, then it's uh, designed to automatically calculate it, and it should work to uh, to the various design codes for whatever structure types um, they they put in for that. It will work fine. I should say that it's aimed at when you're using the you know, Grillage type analysis um, rather than the uh, 3D type analysis. Um, I showed with, with, with the composite bridge wizard. Uh, for the composite bridge wizard, you'd be looking at uh, assigning different temperature loads to the different elements um, rather than this one temperature profile load that applies for the whole uh, depth of the section. Okay. I'm not sure if I've, I've explained that clearly enough. But, um, I think so. Um, well, all of these questions anyway, we'll come back to the group latterly with uh, with answers to these, um, because there are quite a few on here that we, we won't do today. Um, there is one on general design. We'd mentioned the steel design earlier on. Terry showed some slides on that, the composite deck design. 
and uh, the detail of the reporting that you get from those. And now for RC frames, we have a um, high level of um, detail in the report out from that. So we've got a, a question from an existing user here, I presume, on the level of detail for slab design. So the good news on that is we are currently developing um, or redeveloping, I would say, the slab designer to give the same or equivalent level of reporting um, to the other design capabilities that we have in the software. So fairly soon, we'll have very transparent calculations for concrete slab and wall, concrete beam and column, um, steel beams and composite systems. Okay, sorry to interject there, Terry. I'll, uh, I'll hand back to you for the, uh, for the ground engineering. No problem. Yeah, no, what I was going to go on to here is just explain some of the other things that clients also use Lucis for. So, um, for example, uh, retaining walls and dams, or maybe uh, wind farms, or even tunneling projects. And applications like these typically require a more comprehensive model of the soil or geotechnical conditions than some other projects might need. So, um, Lucis has a range of tools which our clients can utilize from uh, springs or trilinear joints through to continuum modeling with nonlinear soil materials and, and contact joints, slide lines, soil interfaces, and indeed full staged construction facilities. And Lucis 19, version 19 includes some new facilities which take this even further. So for example, the 5C reduction method which gives a safety factor based on a soil strength reduction analysis. So it indicates how the available soil strength compares to the soil strength required for equilibrium for a given set of loads. So typically it's used for slope stability or maybe retaining structures. But whatever the situation, it's always as simple as defining and assigning a phi C attribute. And when you solve, the soil strength will, will be incremented downward until failure in order to, 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 uh, to determine that safety factor. Um, so, it, for example, in this analysis, the use of um, three 5C reduction attributes allows us to consider the safety factor for the slope at two different stages of construction, plus the wall independently. So this ensures we can obtain a factor for both the wall and the slope at the end of the analysis, not just one result relating to whichever of the two happens to have the lower safety factor. And then since version 15, our multiple analysis tree on the left here has made it easy to consider the construction sequence with best estimate soil parameters, uh, the upper bound and lower bound parameters or perhaps a completely different construction sequence. And of course, things like consolidation and so on. So taking into consideration the different assumptions appropriate for each such that the different material properties or support conditions will have the ability to then insert, we also have the ability in the branch analysis to insert branches from any stage in any construction sequence. So that could be the, the 5C reduction branch, um, and this approach allows us to check for things like alternative um, construction sequence, maybe a different ending with the same beginning, or consolidation at a particular stage, or that staged drained rather than undrained, or maybe a transient dynamic analysis branch, such as a seismic event, affecting the model partway through the sequence or at the end of the sequence with all the prior stress state inherited. Indeed, practically any analysis can be a branch. And as I've said earlier, if you change a branch, you don't have to rerun the main trunk analysis. And also I've touched on consolidation, which is the equalization of pore pressure with time, which might be associated with all sorts of natural or construction events, including things like uh, dewatering. So in essence, it's the path between the undrained and the drained conditions which is so essential in soil mechanics, since both the stiffness and the strength of soils depend upon the effective stress. And Lucis has been capable of consolidation and seepage type analysis for a very long time, but we've added a shortcut from the undrained to the drain condition 
and this removes the need to explicitly model poor water pressure movements. In this analysis, of course, the workhorse is the material models on the attributes, materials, geotechnical menu. And you'll now find listed our range of geotechnical materials, amongst them the familiar Moore Coulomb, a modified Moore Coulomb with attention and compression caps, the Cam Clay material released in version 16, the Duncan Chang released in version 17, and now the Hope Brown material, which um, describes the behavior of intact and fractured rocks, an elastic, perfectly plastic, with a yield surface which is a curved hexagonal cone. There are options for the definition of the strength parameters and the flow rule, including a transitional option in common with other soil materials in Lucis. The material can be made uh, two phase where hydraulic conductivity can be defined as required, and where when partial saturation is required, draining and filling curves can also be specified. And finally, again, with the com common in common with all the other soils, a K naught initialization facility has been made available. So this material can be used in any static stage construction, dynamic or consolidation analysis in Lucis, like the other soil materials, and along with both the more Coulomb materials in the new IC analysis branches. So now Andy will show us the new geotechnical FIC analysis tool. Thank you very much, Terry. So this is a 2D analysis of a slope of a cutting uh, that's being excavated in stages. And we can define soil materials through attributes, material, geotechnical, where we've got the new hook brow material and recently added Duncan Chang material. But in this particular model, I've used a more Coulomb material. The K0 initialization allows us to start the analysis with the correct at rest soil pressures. We can also define which parts of the model are to have a material strength reduction through attributes phi C reduction. Uh, in this example, the phi C reduction might be applied to the whole model, but in a model where you've got more than one slope or multiple different retaining walls, or even several different soil materials, you could consider each in turn by using a separate phi C attribute. Within the analyses, we've got nonlinear controls, I've included this displacement reset in my first load case. So that allows us to ignore any deflections that are occurring under the self weight of soil while we're setting up the initial state of our model. From LUSAS version 19, we can add branches at any stage within a construction analysis. And one of the purposes of these branches is that it allows us to do a phi C reduction. So that within that phi C reduction branch, we'll be taking the structure to failure but we'll also be able to, because it's branched off from the main trunk, continue down the main analysis, continuing through the construction stage. Now in this particular model, I've only added one branch and I've added it right at the end. So once we've fully excavated, I'm going to do a slope stability analysis. If we now switch to looking at the results, what we can see here uh, is that we've got a safety factor of 2.253, and we're seeing a classic slip circle failure. And this approach can be used for uh, slope stability. It can also be used for retaining walls. And we can also use it in LUSAS in, in three-dimensional models as well. Back to you, Terry. OK, thanks very much, Andy. Um, I just noticed one of the questions that came through as well. Um, asking about the um, moving masses and does it include other degrees of freedom not only vertical i didn't point out on that slide that actually it does include um, all the different vertical and horizontal and transverse i just highlighted the vertical because that was the the most important one at that particular point in time but uh, just just so you're aware of that as well so thanks andy uh, i don't know whether there are other questions just now or whether we we'll just move on um, Terry, I'll, uh, I, I, there, there is a, a geotech one, um, which I will actually, there's a couple, but I think that the, the general one, 
um, is just um, uh, to do with the phi C reduction and um, are both phi and C reduced? Um, Andy, can I put that to you again? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so when we're doing our phi C reduction analysis, uh, we reduce phi, we also reduce phi, uh, C, sorry. So we reduce phi, we reduce C, and we also reduce the tensile yield stress. So they're all reduced by the same factor, uh, and we continue doing that um, until uh, we find failure. So we find the factor by which if we reduce phi and C and the tensile yield stress by the same factor, um, that causes failure. Okay, great. All right, great. well, Terry, I'll hand back to you because we're, we're running over a, a little bit. So, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, other questions well, uh, that have been asked, we will come back to with direct mails latterly. So th thanks to everyone for their questions. Okay, thanks. Well, I think we've basically covered, this is just some of the things that is covered in the geotechnical uh, parts of Lucis, and we hope your geotechnical teams can make more use of that, and then you can do a fully interactive model with everything, your soil and your structure together using Lucis. Uh, another thing I'd just like to cover on is, is reporting, because reporting for models is very important and it's quite often difficult. And I'd just like to remind you that the built-in report writer in Lucis compiles graphical results, plots, graphs, results, tables, design calculations, and even just model data automatically and in a repeatable way. Um, and uh, from views and slices of your models, so they can always keep up to date with any changes in your model. You can also have many reports. I mean, here we're just looking at one report for a checker, but you can have many different covers and many different reports, and even in different, completely different sets of units, the model that you built it. And whenever you click, it generates live and up to date. So you can generate your tables of data for referencing to your print results wizards, your graphs and slices. And you can also even add notes to your model and reference them in your reports too. In this new release, there are six new and updated examples in the online manual to help you go through each of the new tools. And of course, the online help also has details of what's new in version 19, some of which we've not had time to cover today. So just as a reminder, if you're interested in the RC design module, you can upgrade to that at 50% off if you order it before the end of the year. Uh, you can either simply complete the upgrade form here, or you can send uh, myself or, or Philip an, uh, an email. So in conclusion, the new facilities for steel composite bridge decks means that Lucis now offers a real end-to-end -end analysis and design solution for both the Eurocode, US, Indian, and many other regions. From the wizards to help build your model, 3D or grillage, through loading, construction sequences, and all those other considerations, right on to clause checks and transparent calculations you might need for your files and your reports. And this is complemented with improvements for slope and retaining wall and geotechnical analysis. So more productivity, more design, Lucis version 19. Thank you. Do we have any other questions that you want to go through now, Philip, or should we just leave it at that? Uh, there's a couple of questions I might deal with quickly, actually, um, about the vehicle load optimizer again. Uh, so mm -hmm. we've had one asking if we have uh, SV vehicles in autoloader. Uh, we have them in for Eurocode, for the, and both for the basic Eurocode and for the UK National Annex. Um, in terms of uh, CS458, which I think someone else has mentioned, which is uh, assessment with SV vehicles. We are currently developing that. So I was actually talking to the developer this morning who's partway through it, and he had a couple of questions on the implementation. So uh, I, I, I can assure you that CS458 will be released relatively soon. Are there any others, Phil? Um, thanks, Andy. I think, well, there are, well, there are several coming in at the moment. So I, I, We'll, we'll keep the mics active, I suppose, and um, we'll just answer these as uh, as they come in. Um, I've got a couple of questions here. Well, in fact, we've had several through the event about a recording of this. Yes, this was recorded live. 
and uh, everybody that's attended, well, in fact, everybody that signed up, um, whether they attended or not in this case, um, will get an email after the event with a link to be able to watch the video afterwards. Great. Well, I think uh, thank you all very much for your time and attention today. And I think uh, that's it. Thank you.